A great user-friendly navigation bar is essential to the success of any website. In this video, we're going to be building a sidebar navigation using Chalker UI. Before I begin, I want to thank my channel members. If you want to become a member and have access to some awesome perks, be sure to hit the join button to learn more. Without further ado, let's jump into it. To start off, make sure you have Chalker UI installed in your project. Go ahead and import the Chalker provider and then use that in the root of your application. Now for my project, the index page is very simple. As you can see, we are just calling the sidebar component. To make this sidebar, we're going to have three components. The main sidebar component, a nav item component, and a nav hover box component. We'll start with the sidebar component and work our way through. Now the sidebar will stick on the left of the screen and take up the entire height. We can set the position equal to sticky, make left set to 5 pixels, and give it a height of 95 view height. We can then give it a margin top of 2.5 view height. This will position it in the center of the screen with a bit of margin on the top and the bottom that is equal. Next we'll give it a box shadow. That way we can keep it the same color as the background of the entire page and it looks pretty nice. Finally, we'll give it a hard-coded width of 200 pixels. We'll then set the flex direction equal to a column. And finally, we will say justify content is equal to space between. And that's because we're going to have two flex tags inside of here. The top flex tag will have the nav items as well as the hamburger button on the top. And the bottom flex tag will have the employee avatar, name, and title. Let's start with the bottom part. We'll give this a padding of 5%. We'll set the flex direction equal to a column, and we'll give it a width of 100%. Next, we'll align the items to flex start. That way they are positioned towards the left of the screen. We'll give it a margin bottom of 4. Inside of here, let's first use the divider tag. Below that, create another flex. This will hold our avatar and our heading and text tags. Let's first define all of these tags. As you can see, we have all of the text on the screen. Now let's go ahead and add some styles. First off, on the flex tag, Let's set the flex direction equal to a column. We'll also give some margin to the left of 4. On the avatar, we want to give that a size of small. And we can set the SRC equal to avatar1.jpg. You can go ahead and grab that image on my GitHub, which is linked in the description. Now on the flex tag, let's give that a margin top of 4 to push it down from the divider and align everything to the center and that will make the avatar and the text line up together nicely. And we'll finish it off by giving the heading a size small and changing the text color to gray on the text tag. That is all for the bottom portion. On the top portion, we will start by putting an icon button. We'll set the background equal to none. We'll set the margin top equal to five. We'll give it a hover event, keeping the background none. Finally, we'll set the icon equal to FI menu. So I'm using feather icons in this project, and that is imported from React icons. And we can set up an empty on click event listener. We'll come back to that in one second, but first let's define some styles on the flex. We'll set the padding equal to 5%. We'll set the flex direction equal to column, and we can line all the items to the start. And we can change the tag from a div to a semantic nav tag. So when we click this icon button, we want the navigation sidebar to shrink. So we can handle this by using use state. Let's go ahead and set a variable nav size and a method that we can dynamically change this variable called change nav size. Initially, we will set this to large, meaning the sidebar is at the large state. Inside of the onclick listener, we'll write a simple if else statement to change the value of nav size. Now let's go back and replace some of the styles we already defined with this dynamic variable. 
We'll start with the width of the entire sidebar. If the nav size is small, let's make it 75 pixels. Else, that means it's large, we'll make it 200 pixels. Now, as you can see, when we click the button, the sidebar changes. Now, as you can see on the bottom, those styles are messed up. So let's go ahead and fix that. But before we do that, let's add a border radius property. Again, we'll check what size the sidebar is at, and we will set it to the values that we want to set it for that size. In this case, 15 pixels and 30 pixels respectfully. At the bottom, we want to hide the divider on the small state, and we also want to hide all of the text when the nav bar is small. Because we are hiding the divider and the text on the small state, we also want to align the items to the center. In this case, it is just our avatar. And there you can see the navigation bar in action. Now that we have that, let's start defining some of our nav items. Like I said, this will be a different component. So let's jump into navitem.js and define this component. We'll start by giving it a margin top of 30. We'll give it a flex direction of column. We'll set the width equal to 100%. And for the align items property, we want to use the nav size property. So what we can do is we can actually pass in the nav size as a prop. So we'll add that to the component. And then back in sidebar.js, when we define a nav item like so, we can pass in the nav size property as a prop just like that. Now we have access to the nav size in our nav item component. So we can use that to dynamically set the aligned items properly. If the nav size is small, we'll align everything to the center, else align it flex start. Now inside of here, we're going to use the chakra menu component. We'll set the placement of this to the right. We'll first wrap everything with the link tag, and then we'll use the menu button. So when you click the menu button, it will open up the menu. We'll put a flex tag, and then inside of the flex, we'll have our icon and our text tags. Now these will have to be set dynamically. So we're going to pass in a title and an icon also as props. So just like we did for the nav size, we have to pass in the title and the icon as well. For the first one, we're going to use icon fi home, and we're going to use a title of dashboard. So go ahead and add as many nav items as you want. And you'll also notice on the second item, I'm passing in an active prop. This will allow us to get different styles for the active nav item. Now back inside of navitem.js, we can add some additional styles. We'll start with the link. Like I said, we have the active property. So if it's active, let's give it a background color of a nice green. And if it's not active, don't give it any background color. We'll set the padding equal to three, the border radius equal to eight, and on hover, we just want to remove any text decoration and set the background color also to the same green and make sure you add the hashtag before that color. And for the width, we want to check if the nav size is equal to large. If it is, set the width equal to 100%. And if it's small, we don't need to set any width. And don't forget to pass in the active prop up top as well. So we can see how that looks now. So we still need to format the icon and the text up a bit. We'll set the width equal to 100% on the menu button. We'll give the font size to XL on the icon and we'll set the color dynamically. If it's active, set it to a nice green. Else, we'll set it to gray. 
And for the text, let's give it a margin left of 5. And we want to dynamically set the display. If the navigation bar is small, we don't want to see the text, else we do want to see it. So that's looking a lot better now. And as you can see, we can close the sidebar to the small state and it looks good as well. So the last thing to do is to add the nav hover box. So we're gonna wrap this inside of the menu list element. And just like we did for each of the nav items, we need to pass in all the props for the nav hover box. And these will be the same as what was passed in to the nav item. So we have all of them already. We can just set them. However, one new prop that we're gonna add is the description prop. And don't forget to add it to the nav item component as well. Now you can see when we click on a nav item, we see the nav hover box popping up, but there are no styles associated with it. First, let's style the menu list. We'll remove all the padding from the top and the bottom. Next, we'll set the border to none, and we'll give it a width and a height of 200. And we'll set the margin left to 5. So now you can vaguely see it coming through. Now we can style the nav hover box. So instead of here, we're going to have two flex tags. The first flex tag will be self-closing, and this will be the little triangle you see to the left and center of the box. The second flex tag will be the box itself. We'll start with the box. We'll give this a height of 200 and a width of 200 to match the menu list height and width. We'll set the flex direction to column. And what we want to do is we want to align everything to the center. So we can do that by saying align items equals to center and justify equals to center. Next, let's set the background color to a green hex value. And we'll set the border radius to 10 pixels. We'll change the text and icon color to white. And we'll text align everything to the center. And let's add width equals 100% so it fills the entire width. Now we can add our icon, our heading, and our text tags. Again, those are all passed in. And be sure to add each of those props onto the nav hover box component. Now the final step is to add that green arrow. Now we can do this with just CSS. We'll first set the position to absolute. We'll then dynamically calculate the margin top. So we're going to say 100 pixels, which is half of the height, minus 7.5 pixels. And what this will do is center it right in the middle. We'll then give it a margin left of negative 10 pixels. We'll give it a width of 0 we'll give it a height of zero. And then we can use the border properties to actually make this arrow. We'll first set the border top to 10 pixels solid and transparent. We'll then set the border bottom to the same. And finally, we will set the border right equal to 10 pixels solid and the color of our triangle. In this case is that same green color we used for the second flex. And you can see it is now coming through. And with that we have successfully made a dynamic sidebar using Chalker UI.